Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about applications of ChatGPT in SQL. So if you are someone who has to write SQL code or has to fetch data from SQL based databases regularly, ChatGPT can immensely improve your productivity and efficiency. You might be thinking that probably ChatGPT can guide you in writing the code or tell you what to do. But no, ChatGPT can actually give you the code that you can run to get your desired results. So ChatGPT can write SQL code for you. Now let's dive into this video to see how that can be done. So let me first tell you what we will cover in this video. We will start by solving a simple SQL problem. I'll ask a query to ChatGPT and whatever code it suggests, I'll put into my SQL engine and show that that particular code works. The next step would be to solve advanced SQL problems. So I have an example using which I'll show that ChatGPT can give you advanced SQL queries also. Next, I'll show you that if you have an SQL code which is giving you errors, how you can debug that SQL code using ChatGPT. Then I'll show you an example of how ChatGPT can be used to explain SQL code. For example, suppose someone has written a complex SQL query and you do not know how it works and what it means. You can put that code into ChatGPT and ask it. It will tell you what that code means. Lastly, we'll talk about advanced data analysis tool. This is a special feature available in the paid version of ChatGPT, which enhances ChatGPT's abilities by including ability to use Python coding language. So I'll show you how this additional tool enhances your power of writing SQL codes. Let's start with this very simple problem. We have this student's data table. And in this, some students belong to grade 10, some belong to grade 11 and so on. And we want to retrieve names of all the students who are in grade 10. Now, if you know SQL, you know that this is a very simple problem. You want to select the names from the table student where grade is 10. So this is a very simple SQL query. If you know SQL, you can write it in probably five seconds. But if you are a beginner, you can use ChatGPT get this query for you. Now, when you want to get SQL code from ChatGPT, I suggest that you structure your prompt in this way. First, you should identify what you have. So we have a table named students containing columns, ID, name, age and grade. Then what do you want to do? So we want to retrieve names of students in grade 10. Now simply combine these two statements to get your ChatGPT prompt. So the prompt I have written here is, I have a table named students containing the columns, ID, name, age and grade. Give me PostgreSQL code to retrieve names of students in grade 10. Specifying which dialect of SQL you are using is also very important so that ChatGPT can give you correct syntax for the code. So here I have written PostgreSQL. If you are using MySQL, you can write MySQL code here to get the syntax in that particular dialect. Now let's copy this prompt, paste it in ChatGPT and see what it does. So here I am on the ChatGPT website. I'm currently using 3.5, although I have the plus version and I can use ChatGPT 4 also. But because I want to show you that the free version is also able to do this and write SQL code, I'll be writing this prompt in ChatGPT 3.5. So I've written the prompt here, send this message. So here's the code that we need to run. Let's copy this code, go to our PostgreSQL user interface. So I'm using PG admin to run my PostgreSQL code. I have already created this table called students. Let's run the query suggested by ChatGPT to see if it works or not. Let's run it. And you can see that Alice and Carol are in the grade 10. So the point of this simple example is that ChatGPT can write the code for you and if you copy paste that code in your SQL UI, you can see that it runs also. Now let's take an advanced level problem. Here I want to identify salespeople who have made more than one sale in any seven day window. And the data that I have is in this format. So my table name is sales and I have dates 
the product sold amount and salesperson id now i want to identify whether any salesperson has made more than one sale in any seven day window so if i have data like this performing an analysis of any seven day window is going to be very complicated there are two ways of doing this one by self join or the other is to use windows function so let's see what chat gpt suggests in this scenario again i'll do the same thing i'll mention my haves and i'll mention my wants i'll combine them to create my chat gpt prompt and let's put this prompt into chat gpt to see the response so here i have copy pasted my prompt i have a table named sales containing these three columns that i want to have in my result give me postgresql code to identify sales people who have made more than one sale in seven day window you can see that it has suggested me a code that does a self join and a window function so it is doing a self join with the same table and it is using windows function now i have not created this table so i will not be able to check whether this code works or not but most probably this code will work in the scenario that a code does not work and we get an error we can debug the code also using chat gpt so let's see how chat gpt does that so here is a simple example of debugging sql code i ran this code where i wanted to get total bonus given to the employees by doing sum of bonus but i got this error saying function sum does not exist now if you know what this means this basically means that this bonus column is not numerical which is why you cannot sum it so you need to cast the bonus variable to integers to solve this issue but many times we get errors which we do not understand you just need to give the code and the error to chat gpt and ask it to solve it for you so here is my prompt for this i ran the following code give the code and i got this error give the error how can i resolve it let's go to chat gpt to see whether it is able to give us correct code or not so here i am going to copy paste that prompt and run it so it is telling us that the variable is in character varying type and you need to have numerical type which is why it is suggesting either you alter the table and the column type to numeric or you can use this query which uses case statement to filter out non numerical values wherever you have numerical values it casts it into numerical value and finds the sum let's see if this works or not i have this table in postgresql so i have the employees table here let's paste this query sum select it and run it you can see that it now runs and gives me a new column called total bonus with sum of the bonus values so in this way if you have buggy code you can give the code and the error you are getting from sql to chat gpt and it will give you the corrected code back the next use case is sometimes we have complex sql code which is not written by us so one of our colleague may have written some complex sql code and we may not understand how it works or what output it is giving for example i have this complex query running on my database i do not understand what output it gives to understand what analysis is being done by the query we can give this query to chat gpt and ask it what this query is doing so let's copy this query and ask chat gpt to decode what this query does so here i'll write explain what the following code does shift enter to get into the next line and paste your code and run it you can see that it is explaining what calculations are being done in this code and lastly it is given us a summary that this code is used to find and list months where the cumulative sales of products in each category exceed the average sales for the year 2022 it provides a detailed analysis of sales performance allowing you to identify which product categories performed exceptionally well in specific months now by looking at this query you may not have been able to understand what this is doing 
But if you read this paragraph, you can clearly understand what that query does and what is the meaning of the output that you will get when you run that query. The next thing I want to talk about is the advanced data analysis tool. This tool is not available for everyone to use. It is available only in the paid version. So if you have purchased the paid version that is ChatGPT plus, then you can use this advanced data analysis tool. With this tool, you have the ability to upload your own data. So if you have your own data, you can store it as a CSV file and you can upload the data on ChatGPT. Then ChatGPT uses Python to analyze the data that you have given it. So you do not need to provide all the information that these are your columns, this is the type of data you have in your table, etc. You just give your CSV file and using Python, ChatGPT will be able to analyze the data that you have in your database. But there is one issue when you're using this because you are uploading your data to ChatGPT. There is obviously data security issue. So if your data is sensitive, you should probably not use this or you should change your actual data with dummy data and then upload it so that your data security stays intact. Now let's go to chat GPT and see how this works. So when you start a new chat, you have this option of chat GPT 3.5, which is selected by default if you are on the free version. But if you are on the paid version, that is chat GPT plus, you have the option of selecting chat GPT 4 and within this you have three options either to stay on the default model or use advanced data analysis option or these plugins option. So here I'm going to use the advanced data analysis tool option. Once you have selected that, you will notice that this plus symbol comes using which you can upload your files containing the data. So I have selected loan lead data and I'm going to ask chat GPT to give me code for creating a table based on this data and copying the data from the CSV file. So I'm writing the prompt as based on the data in the file, give me PostgreSQL code to create the table for storing this data and then give me code to copy the data from this CSV file to the database. So here's my prompt, let's send. So this time, notice that it is saying that, let me first take a look at the contents of this CSV file. And to take a look at the contents, it is writing Python code. So if I open this, you can see it has written this Python code and it has run it to see what data is present in my CSV file. So you can see that it has given me two queries. First is a create table query where different columns be created, but these columns are having data type based on the analysis that it has already done. So the create table query has been created based on the Python based data analysis using this advanced data analysis tool. After that, it has suggested us the copy command to get the data from the CSV file into our database. It is suggesting us to replace the file path and to ensure that we have read permissions to the CSV file also. So in this way, you can combine the power of Python based data analysis using this advanced data analysis tool. Now, lastly, I want to discuss a very important thing. A lot of times when I show all of these features to my students, they start thinking that they do not need to learn SQL now, but that is not true. You have to think of this situation like this. You are the boss and chat GPT is your skilled assistant. You are responsible of doing the data analysis. You are responsible of getting the required answers to the data problems. And you can ask chat GPT for writing SQL code for you and helping you out. But you have to guide chat GPT by giving it the right prompts. So as a boss, you have to perform the duty of giving the information and guidance to chat GPT. And then when chat GPT gives you back the solution, you must be able to review that solution because a lot of times the code given may not work or the code given 
may not give the desired result to you. So both of these things, giving the guidance and reviewing the solution, requires that you are an expert in SQL. So you need to know what is to be done, how it is to be done, and what ChatGPT has done for you, whether it is right or wrong. So this is a very important note for you that you have to use ChatGPT for productivity and efficiency. You cannot rely on it completely as of now. So do take ChatGPT's help, use it to create your code, improve your efficiency and productivity. But when the code is generated, you should be able to review it. If you do not know what ChatGPT has written, do not use that code. Use ChatGPT to save your time and do not rely completely on it. That's all in this video. See you in the next one.